could do this one, but then there's this one. Oh, oh, hello, you're back. <laughs> I'm embarrassed now you caught me getting ready for our segment of Fancy Nancy Book Club. I hope you enjoyed this story by our friend. I just think they are wonderful when they tell us those stories. Well, you know how in the first part of the show, we talked about stories that reminded us of other stories. Well, we're not this time. I'm just going to share with you new books I found at the library that I love. This one has the most amazing illustrations, and it's called The Most Amazing Creatures in the Sea. It's written by Brenda Gieberson, and the illustrations are by Jenity Spearin. Oh my goodness, wait till you see. And I like the way the author writes this book. She's writing it as if she were each animal speaking, and it's almost like each animal thinks they deserve the title of the most amazing creature in the sea. So on each page, a different animal will talk about themselves, why they are amazing, and why they should be called the most amazing. The first one we find out is a box jellyfish. And the box jellyfish is talking and saying how they have all these stinging tentacles. And that is so interesting and amazing that they should be the most amazing creature of the sea. But I'll show you a page that scared me. And I kind of think this person, or not a person, but a creature, the whale shark. Ooh, he talks about how he is the biggest shark in the ocean. He's twice as long as a polar bear and the great white shark, and he's just huge. And he swims through the ocean with these big teeth, and he's eating all these little animals called krill and plankton. He kind of scared me, and I think he's pretty amazing. But then I saw this guy. Where is he? He was the scariest of all. Oh, there he is, a wolf fish. Oh my goodness, I had never heard of a wolf fish until I read this book. Look at those teeth. My Mr. Wolf Fish, what big teeth you have. And I hope they're not big to eat me up. Well, I don't know which one you will like the best or which one will be scary or funny or interesting to you, but I do know that this book kept my attention for quite a while. And if you're interested in the mysterious creatures of the deep, dark ocean, maybe you'll enjoy this book about the amazing creatures. The next book I have for you is a funny little title. It's called Little Miss Grubby Toes. Grubby is a fancy word for something that isn't very fancy at all. Grubby is a fancy word for kind of nasty little filthy toes, grubby toes. And if you look at her picture on the front, you will see, yes, her toes are grubby. I don't know how she will ever keep them clean. I love this book for several reasons, but I loved it more when I found out there are going to be more books about Little Miss Grubby Toes. This one is called She Steps on a Bee. And then there will be others. I think there's going to be one soon, uh, maybe about her going to school or I don't know that, but the author says there will be many more, and he doesn't even tell us her real name. We have to wait till several books before we learn her real name. Now that's kind of a mystery. She got the name Little Miss Grubby Toes from her dad. It's a nickname. And here she is outside. She loves to play outside. But she's just a little bitty girl, and she has a lot to learn. 
the most important thing she needs to learn is that her parents are wise and they have important things to tell her and they tell her for a reason. Just like on this particular day, her mother tells her, yes, she can go outside, it's beautiful out there but she needs to wear her shoes because mom has seen some bees swarming. That means flying viciously around the plants and they are very interested in getting close to the plants. And if people get in their way, they can sting us. And so mother told little Miss Scrubby Toes all about that, but how the bees are very helpful. They make plants grow and they give us nectar to make all oh, that yummy honey that we eat on our biscuits with butter. Now, even though Miss Scrubby Toes is very little, she should know how to mind her mother. So she puts her shoes on and she goes outside to play, but those shoes just start bugging her and bugging her. I can't imagine that because I love shoes, as you well know, and I can't imagine wanting to run around and get dirty, but little Miss Grubby Toes wants to take those shoes off. They are just bugging her feet. We know she should listen to her mother. Do you think she will? What do you think? She took off her shoes and she's jumping in a mud puddle and the bees are close by. Do you think what I think? Let's see. Oh, she's swinging, she's playing, and look at that face. And the words say, oh no. Yep, I think she stepped on that bee. What's going to happen now? Will she be crying and hurt? Will mom be mad because she disobeyed? What if little Miss Scrubby Toes is allergic to bee stings like some of our friends and they have to have special medicine to help them when they get stung by a bee? Whew, this could end very badly, but I don't think it will because the author has promised us more stories about little Miss Scrubby Toes. One more interesting thing about the author, do you know his name is Mr. Eddie Price? Do you know the first book Mr. Price wrote was for grown-ups? It was a historical book called Witter's Landing, and he won several awards for that. And guess where Mr. Price lives? Davis County, Kentucky. He is one of our close authors, our local authors. He even went to Davis County Public Schools. So we are so proud of Mr. Price and his new series of books about Little Miss Grubby Toes. But we are a little upset, Mr. Price, that you don't tell us her name yet. I guess we'll just have to keep reading. And our last story I want to share is our Fancy Nancy book. And as you know, Fancy Nancy, me, we do not have grubby toes. We always wear fancy shoes and socks. But I knew you would love this book because all of you know about my favorite pet, Frenchie, my dog. This book, Fancy Nancy and the Posh Puppy, tells you all about how I got Frenchie and how she came to live at our house. I wanted a dog so badly. I even borrowed our neighbor's dog and pretended she was mine. I wanted to show my parents that I could take good care of a dog and I would be responsible. But you know Mrs. Devine's dog is kind of fancy and I really found out I don't need a fancy dog. I was so sad. I didn't know what would happen. My family took me out to dinner at the King's Crown, and you can tell how sad I look because I want a dog more than anything. And when we're leaving, I find Frenchie at the animal shelter. I hope you will read to find out all about my troubles and how I found Frenchie and how she came to live at our house.
If you like dogs as much as I do, you will love this story. And once you know how I first got Frenchie, that will make, make it even more fun when you see her in my other stories. I have to say, this special set of books definitely has the Fancy Nancy seal of approval. And I just know you will enjoy reading each and every one of them. Thank you for tuning in today. Be sure to write me. Let me know how you like these books. If you want to hear more books from Mark Teague or if you want me to find some different books for you, I love to hear from you either by letters or email. Just contact me, Fancy Nancy, you know who I am. And the information will be on the screen. And let me hear from you. I just love to talk to you about reading and I want you to share with me too. Until next time, keep reading those books. Au revoir.